Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Mary presents Introduction to Addictions, filmed on the 31st of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Well, I don't know if addictions need much introduction. Who reckons they already know a fair bit about them? <laughs> no, look, you guys, I reckon the majority of you have already heard a lot of theory on addictions. Is that right? You could probably get up here and do a bit of introduction for me. So let's just look. You'll notice this week we have been placing a lot of focus on how things feel. So I'm going to involve you right now in helping me describe what addictions feel like. So let's, I'm going to do a diagram to help us, and it's going to stay there all day, so I'll put the line in half. Okay, I'm going to call this the cycle. of addiction. All right. So, what does it feel like when you have this addictive desire? What, what's it feel like? Just at the back there. How would you describe this addiction? No, no, here. Yep. Tess? Tess. Um, pushy, uh, tunnel vision, nothing else matters. So. Nothing else matters, right? It's, it's, what if we could say it, that's good, definitely. If we could say it in one word, how would you describe it? Pierre? Thanks, Jules. It's compulsion. 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 Yeah, it's a very good word for it. Okay. So it feels like a compulsion. What are the other feelings you feel when you want this addiction? Phoebe? It feels desperate. Desperate, doesn't it? Yep. Desperate. What else? Carty? Um, you crave it. Crave it, yes. All these kind of feelings. Desperate, driven, compulsion. Uh, Catherine, if you keep your hand up. Yeah. It's another thing that overwhelms us. <laughs> well, yeah, it does, doesn't it? it? Most of us let the overwhelm of the compulsion uh, take over, don't we? Yeah. All right. So when this happens, when we feel this compulsion, this desperate, driven feeling, there's two things... We, and we begin to act. There's two things that can happen, isn't there? What are they? Uh, is it Pamela? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we use our logic and our reason to justify why we should have that, compo that addiction. Well, we do. All, we've already justified it, haven't we? Because we've started acting on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. We've started acting on it. So what's going to happen, Kel? Kelly, um, they get met or they don't get met. Exactly. So let's add this to our diagram. So our addiction is met or not met. It's satisfied or not satisfied. So how does it feel when it gets met, how do we feel? Karina? Bloody marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, who else had their hand up? What are some other words? Anto? Sense of relief, Anto. Relief, yes. So let's start adding some of these. We feel relief. 
great. What else? Uh, Carti? And if we come to Rose on this side? Yeah. Um, could it be like you feel safe? Safe, yes, that's very common. For a lot of us women, our addiction gets met and we, oh, safe. I feel all right now. Yeah. Rose? Rose, satisfied. Satisfied, yeah. Okay, let's add some of these. So safe, satisfied. Uh, who else? Uh, so Susan on this side and Laura on that one. It's almost like a good meal. <laughs> a good meal. <laughs> we get that like warm feeling in our tummy where everything's, everything's all right. That's what we tell ourselves. That's what yeah. it feels like. Yep. Uh, Laura? Um, that you feel accepted or like, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but yeah. Yeah, is that, uh, is it feel kind of that relieving? My anxiety's gone now. It, I'm yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and there's yep. like a real neediness with it. Before it gets met. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yes, a lot of this compulsion feels quite needy in its, yeah. in its nature. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks. If we go back to Ivano. Ivano, um, happy? Happy? Yeah. Like Karina's bloody marvellous, hey? Yeah. <laughs> There's another really key one that a lot of us feel. If we come to Phoebe and over to Bruce. In control. Control, yes. So we feel in control. Which is kind of a joke, isn't it? We feel like we're in control, but we're being driven by a compulsion that we, we are letting to overwhelm us. We've let rational thought grow out of our head, but we think, I'm totally in control now. Yeah. Bruce? Um, we feel... We've justified the addiction. We've justified it, yeah. We feel, um, that's a good one. Let's put justified. It was all worthwhile, actually, wasn't it? It was right, what we did, because it, it got met. Yeah. It, the addiction's correct. It was correct. Good on me. I did the good thing. Yeah. <laughs> all right, if we come to Jennifer. If you just keep your hand up, Jennifer, yeah. Jennifer, we feel loved. Loved. That's the key one. And this is really important to notice, that we most often associate feeling loved with events where our addiction or relationships where our addictions are getting met. And it's not really love, is it? So we feel loved. Can everyone read that okay? So what happens? We just, we had our compulsion, it got met. Let's draw some arrows in here. What happens then? Thalia? Uh, usually when the addiction is met, it's very fleeting and you're left feeling actually really unloved and very empty at the end of it, I've felt anyway. Yeah. Usually when I've had my addictions met and... It doesn't last long. It doesn't last long. No. I agree with that part of your statement. Mm. I think often you're feeling empty when your addictions aren't getting met. Mm. Yeah. But I think that the feeling of the compulsion being met, phew, that was great, yay, yeah. that is a fleeting feeling often. Yeah. And so what do we do then? Seek for more. Seek for more. Mm. We go back into this compulsive cycle, don't we? Well, okay, and actually, like Bruce said, we think, well, it was all right, worked out, so let's just keep going. Want to keep having more of that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. So we go back into the cycle. Okay, everyone got that? I'm standing in front of the diagram. And what's happened? Because we've gone back into the compulsive state... We're staying pretty far away from the truth of things, aren't we? Because this compulsion, what's it born out of? It's a desire to... Uh, Dan? 
Daniel, it's a desire to cover an emotion, to avoid. It's, it's the compulsion to avoid something, isn't it? Yeah. And so we go into it, we have the compulsion, we get something met, feels all good and lovely, and we think, oh, great, we'll just do that again. And what have we done? We've gotten further away from the emotion we were trying to avoid, further away from truth, and really further away from God in that place, haven't we? And what have we reinforced? Susan? I, I feel we probably uh, reinforce our facade. Well, we do often yeah. in yeah. our addictions, yes. But we reinforce, Renee? Nada. We just need to. Renee, um, reinforce our lack of faith in ourselves and lack of faith in God's laws. Yeah, and could you say that you reinforce a lot of false beliefs? A lot of false beliefs about the way the world works, about God, about ourselves. We think this is the only way to roll, don't we? This is what should happen. And it just worked, so let's keep doing it. Yeah. Okay. Now let's talk about the other thing that can happen. What happens when our addictions don't get met? How does that feel? Michael? Frustration and anger. Yes. Very often. Who can relate to that? Mm. Frustration, anger, annoyance, crabbiness, crankiness, <laughs> all those things. Uh, Jennifer? What else? If you just keep your hand up for Nada to see. No, nope, you need your hand up, up, up. I called you the wrong name, that's why you're confused. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anxiety. Anxiety? Do we really feel fear. anxiety? Who feels fear when their addiction doesn't get met? Yeah, let's call it panic, which is not fear. Panic is is a total avoidance of fear, actually. Most anxiety is a total avoidance of the experience of fear. It's saying, I don't want to feel it, I don't want to feel it, I don't want to feel it, I don't want to feel it. And you know, most of you call that feeling fear, and it's not. It's resisting fear and going into a state of panic. There's nothing, if you feel about the emotion, there's nothing soft about that, is there? There's nothing submitting, nothing surrendering. It's like, <gasps> no, 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 no. That's not feeling fear. That's feeling panic or anxiety. So yes, let's put panic. Anxiety. Okay. What other feelings might we feel, Marco? Marco, uh, not loved. Unloved. Yeah, unloved. That's the classic thing yeah. that pretty much everyone feels when they're in this cycle of addiction. When their addiction doesn't get met, they often go and have a big cry about not being loved. Do you think that helps them release a the causal emotion? Do you think it's a worthwhile cry? can help you, can't it? I'll talk more about this in my second talk today. Okay, so often we feel unloved. Any other feelings you feel when your addictions aren't met? Lulleen? Gonna have to move a bit more, Nada. Not rely on your audience. You can go around the edges. Um, basically, everything that was on the other side, but un or not. Not, or, yeah. So, yeah. dissatisfied, not relieved, unsafe, out of control. Yeah. So, let's put them. Yes, very true. Okay, and one more at the back. Yes? Yep. Just keep your hand up, that's great. Carmel, physical pain. Physical pain, yeah. Sometimes we do feel physical pain, don't we? Yes. Physical pain, I can't spell. Um, and physical pain is all the result of our de deep desire, sorry, in front of the thing, to avoid our emotion. So often we're engaged in addictions to suppress our pain 
using drugs or warmth or comfort or other things, the pain that's already existing because we're already suppressing things, and then when that addiction doesn't work, we end up with physical pain again. Yep, very true. Okay, so what happens then? Anto? Anto, we get inventive. <laughs> we do. What do we do? Well, we seek m manipulative ways, uh, look for other ways to get the compulsion met. Yes, that one didn't work, I'll go for another one. Yep. So we look for it in other places. And what does this do? We stay in this cycle, don't we? What effect does it have on our soul, Kel? It degrades our soul. We just swing from one to the other. Yeah, yep. Anything else that you feel about staying in this cycle? See, often we do go, we try one, doesn't get met, we go back in, we get it met somewhere else. We end up zigzagging all over the place, don't we? Uh, Dennis? Dennis, we don't get to feel our emotion. That's right. And that's the whole point, isn't it, for most of us? That's what is driving the compulsion, the will-based desire to not feel an emotion. Yep. Um, if we go to Miranda. So not, being, not having our addictions met and when we look being creative and inventive, we just create more and more addictions on we top do. of that. Yes. Yeah. We often create a multitude of addictions. Mm -hmm. Most of you have 50 addictions that you employ before lunchtime. All, all little ways, and this is what Cornelius and I are going to be challenging you about today, is to start to see where these addictions are in play. Because they're insidious. And most of them are pretty accepted by society, by your partner, by your friends. Most of you, many of you older single ladies have created a whole lifestyle that supports your addictions, so they never get challenged. And if they do, well, you just withdraw from that sphere or that relationship and you feel, you feel oh, safe and in control again. But it's not real. And the point about this part of this cycle, or this whole cycle, is that these emotions, are keep, they are not getting you any closer to the true emotion that you're trying to avoid. The only way you can, they can help you is to become aware of the compulsion. So feeling them might make you more sensitive to the compulsion, which is a good step. It's a good step. But don't fool yourself that it's causal emotion, that it's the hurt self releasing something. Does that make sense? Marco? I intellectually know the process of it because I'm not moving towards God, but I feel guilty when they're met, but I still do it. Yeah. You know, like it's just stagnant. Yeah. 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 And, and it's not progressing. Like so you guys, I like I said at the beginning, you can all tell me you've got an intellectual knowledge of what's going on, don't you? You get the drift. You get it intellectually. Now, Cornelius and I are going to be encouraging you towards becoming more sensitive emotionally towards this process. And that's a step that you'll need to take in order to change it. Okay, so when I come back later, I'm going to be talking to you about some different options that you have at every point in this cycle, when you feel a compulsion, when it's met or when it's not met, and that is to challenge the addiction. You have that choice. Most of us don't pause long enough to recognise a choice, but there is a choice. So when I come back, I'll be talking to you about the way you can practically start to do that in your life. But Cornelius is going to give you some great information about various ways this plays out, especially in relationships. Before I go, there's just three more things I'd like to say to you about addictions. Let me just put this in the bottom here. So 
we can challenge the addiction at any point. But before I go, three things to say about addictions. First one, without humility to your emotions, you will create addictions. There's no other thing that's going to happen. If you don't want to feel something, you will create an addiction to cover it. So that starts to give you some kind of concept of how many addictions must be playing out in your life, doesn't it? As you've got some intellectual awareness of all the stuff that's in there, there's got to be a lot of addictions. So without, without humility, addictions are inevitable. How can I write that quickly? Without humility, they're inevitable. Second point, addictions support you in your denial. Some of you have addictions that are so entrenched, that seem so normal and so reasonable for you, that you don't even have any sense of the emotion that's driving the compulsion. You don't know some of the fears that are inside of you because you've had addictions from the age of 10 that have kept you away from them, and now you think they're not there. So it's going to be hard to recognise really what you're going to encounter until you start to challenge addictions emotionally. Make sense? Yeah. So they support denial. Third and final thing I want to say to you is that without a sole challenge of addictions, the words we say are meaningless. So let me explain that a little bit more. Now, I see this playing out a lot when you're interacting with Jesus because he's lovely. And a lot of you have this big, needy feeling with a lovely man. Please, like, I've got all these dad issues. Just be lovely with me. And he's telling you things that are quite confronting, but you're just engaged in the addiction. And it's only when he from a soul perspective, stops meeting that addiction, which he often does with many of you, then you feel super challenged. But when, like I can stand up here and if I've got a big hole with men and I, Pierre and I can have a conversation, I can be saying, Pierre, you've got all these issues with women. And he can say to me, Mary, you've got all these issues with men. And if on a soul level, there is no acknowledgement of that truth, we can just engage in an addictive situation and the words are meaningless. Do you see what I mean? Conversely, if I've patched up a big hole that Pierre still has wide open, I can be saying to him, Pierre, like it's great to see you here, but hey, there's some things you've got to look at. He's going to feel way challenged. He might feel like I'm just not loving him. I'm such an unloving woman because I've stopped meeting that addiction. Who's experienced that? at a Divine Tree seminar. Wow, that lovely feeling that I associate with being loved is not there. They don't seem to be being attacking, but I feel like they are. It's terrible. And this is the power of the soul in addictions. And this is why, for many of you who've been engaged with willpower and intellectual deconstruction of addictions, and this is why it hasn't worked. We have to engage our souls. So Corny and I are going to be encouraging you towards that today. And I'll let him come up and talk to you about. Sorry? Oh, we'll have a break. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a break for five minutes so you can go to the loo. And he'll come and talk to you about addictions in relationships. <laughs>